Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Today is Friday, June 14th, 2019. Time is 1.01 p.m. This is a special meeting. It's a continuation of our fiscal 20 budget deliberations. I'm calling this meeting to order. Attending our commissioners, Duncan Brooks and Filios. I'd also like to welcome former county commissioner, Bob Bingham. Welcome, Bob. Bob is attending with us today. Do we have any changes to the agenda? Hearing none, we also have another guest, John Robodeau. Welcome, John. Didn't want to forget you. Okay, so uh, the first of our business items, and we do have some potential action items. First item, review the budget analysis reports prepared by the auditor's office. Go right ahead, Dina. Thanks, Chris. Welcome, everyone, to the next four in a series of 14 budget meetings. So glad everybody could come. Today, our goals are to go through the analysis requests from last week's meeting, and then to talk about uh, where we go from here and where the board would like to start uh, focusing priorities. So I'll just go ahead and get started. So last week, there were some analysis requests. So I'm just going to very, very lightly touch on the easy ones, and then uh, Michelle put together a nice short PowerPoint that kind of highlights the, the analysis that we did on travel and overtime. So the first medical insurance increase by employee, that was a request from Commissioner Duncan. This is our current uh, increase per alliant to date. That's likely going to change because they're coming back in a few weeks. Currently, they're, the headcount Using medical insurance according to Alliant, the census is 750, which means that the annual increase per employee to the county is uh, 248150. So just for fun, I did a little uh, calculation on the side here. So if the county were to pass on this cost to the employee completely, it would be $206 a month or $103 per pay period. If the county were to kick in 50%, it would be $930 to the county and $103.40 per month to the employee. If the county were to kick in 75%, that would be $1.4 approximately, and the employee would pay $51.70 a month or an extra $25.85 per pay period. And if the county were to pay 85%, that's 1.6, and the employee would see an increase monthly of 3102. So just some numbers to think about. This is just a high line. If we were to say, okay, the, the employee's gonna pick up some of the cost here, how much would the county be left paying? So hopefully that answers that question. And again, I'll have all of these uh, documents at the end of our meeting available on the O Drive for you to okay. review. Okay, we had another question. I don't see Sean mm -hmm. here, but um, for fleet management and for Sean, they mm -hmm. were going to look at uh, the three-year debt issue. We did get some legal opinions back saying basically that it is considered debt, but if we get a clause in the contract that says that we're not obligated past one year, so if the funding were to run out and not be refunded for the next year, that we wouldn't be on the hook for that. If Ford leasing says that's okay, then it's not considered public debt and it would go from year to year. So that's the answer to that one. So it sounds like we're a green light if we wanted to choose that option from a legal and statutory perspective as long as that caveat was in the leasing contract. So then the five-year projection of vehicles needed, I'm waiting to hear back from fleet management on that and I will follow up. So let's skip down revenue trends. Um, <clears throat> the last few days, Michelle and I have been digging into the data very deeply. Uh, currently, I was, I was looking at revenue and looking at prior years, looking at averages, and the areas where I saw big decreases in revenue, I took a deeper dive for the most part. Those were when we took fund balance and placed it to fund particular things. So our revenue estimates are pretty close. A lot of departments like community development have increased their revenue projections because of legal changes or because anticipated customer flow. So I think revenue is pretty well represented as is. So 
rather than go into a big detailed explanation, I'm pretty confident saying that our revenue numbers, our non-tax revenue numbers are pretty close. So that said, we did look at overtime and mandated travel. So we have a lovely PowerPoint here and I'm gonna hand this off to Michelle because she took point on gathering the data for this. <laughs> there it is. So I'm gonna run the machine and I'm gonna let Michelle talk. All right, to the next one. So we're gonna take a look at the travel and training and, and kind of make a plan. And we looked at it in two different ways, um, taking a granular approach or a global approach. So um, at the last meeting, I think it was the elected or the board said, hey, go back and let's go back to 2019 values, which is what we did here. We compared the original uh, fiscal year 20 budget request to the fiscal year 19 budget. And you can see the values there, the orange is the fiscal year 2019 and the red um, bars are the fiscal year 2020. Um, most, uh, most elected officials uh, organizations kept their travel and training budgets flat or decreased their requests for fiscal year 20. And the largest increase that you can see here, just following that, that methodology, the largest increase was the $88,000, and then the largest decrease was $4,000, with a total change of $93,000. So we really didn't drop that budget down a whole lot by following that methodology. So with that in mind, we were looking at, you know, like I mentioned earlier, um, the different approaches. So we need to go through, if we go granular, we're going to need to look at it line by line, reduce and eliminate multiple expenses, evaluate other options, and set goals and create a plan. So at the granular approach, by doing that, we would go into each um, org set and review each line item that was submitted, eliminate costs for multiple employees attending the same conference, make those hard decisions. Can we just send one person? as opposed to multiple. Evaluate all the long distance travel and, and find other options that might be available. Do we really need to go to Florida or, or Georgia or wherever they may be sending because those are gonna be more expensive trips. Can we um, leverage webinars or online seminars? Evaluate all the training and determine if there's a train the trainer approach that we can take instead of sending five people to a, a, a training seminar or whatever. Can we just send one or two? And then you'd eliminate the cost associated with that. And then eliminate all the travel or training for those employees that are approaching retirement. Is it worth it to spend the money on that because you know they're leaving within the next year or so? So taking a global approach, what I did is um, went back to 2016 through 2019, and 2019 was a projected amount based on the current spend, and found the median value over that period. And just taking a broad approach to that, I said, okay, here's this amount that this organization or this group spent over that you know, three or four year time frame, what was the median value, and then add on 10%. And that way, by doing that approach, you're eliminating, because you're using median, you're eliminating the extreme highs and the extreme lows. And tacking on a 10%, um, just kind of throwing that out there as something to evaluate, but by tacking on 10%, that would you know, account for any uh, cost increases that you, know, you would have seen over that time frame. And that would bring in the county a potential $250,000 savings. Questions? Are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready to cut. Go, oh, sure. Well, we're going to talk about overtime for just a few okay, minutes. Go ahead. But <laughs> given that part of the presentation, what our hope is, or you know, what we will be asking from you is, do you want us to, to crunch the numbers with that uh, median value with a 10% addition to fund, dig in, look at the mandated travel, look at where we can take out duplication and try to glean some savings. Is that something that the board is interested in doing? Yes, for me. 
So it, are we asking an either or, or is that one okay. scenario? Well, this is, this is this, the first scenario we've already cut back to FY19 levels, right. but we think that we can go in and probably get some more savings if we take this approach. And we would reach out to individual departments and make sure that we weren't cutting something that was mandated or yeah. that, that actually had to be done. But we're thinking if, if, if the board is okay with this approach, we could re reduce some duplication, maybe reduce some long distance travel just for next year, just to try to save a little bit. Right, no, I'm, I'm fine with that. I just didn't know if like just having that mean number with the 10% and just then you wouldn't have to do any more research. Is that okay. right? Well, we've already dug in quite a bit, so okay. we already have a good database. Okay. Sure. So it's just a matter of if, if you're good with that, then we'll go ahead and proceed and see how much we can come back with. Yeah, that'd be great. Are you okay with that? Yeah, it's yeah. a good place to go. Okay. okay. <clears throat> All right. So it's not a huge amount of money, but we're you know we're kind of looking everywhere to try to find some savings. So, overtime. So the second, the third request of the board was for us to look at overtime. So we dug into overtime. So, as a county. I'm estimating, according to the trends in prior years, we're looking at about $1.6 million spent on overtime as a county. Um, of that, it's no surprise that the Sheriff's Office is the key driver of overtime. It's just the nature of the work. So our current funding for the Sheriff's Organization for overtime is $865,036. That's after the cuts that were made last week of $260,000 to try to bring it down. We did take into consideration that the, the jail is now fully, pretty much fully staffed. It's getting close to being fully staffed, so the Sheriff was willing to cut the overtime there okay. and try to bring it back down to what we estimate they will need. Um, in the current year, um, as in prior years, uh, we believe that there's enough open positions in the sheriff's organization to cover FY19's expenses so that they don't go over. But we're seeing budget versus actual, the actuals are, are overshooting the budget by quite a bit. So that said, you can see the county's growth in overtime. Notice that the numbers at the left are much smaller than the sheriff over at the right. The county in general is using more overtime, but the largest share is with the sheriff. Again, no surprise. But everybody's experiencing growth, and if we can't add people, then we're seeing growth in overtime. Okay. So, again, demand for services, open positions. Um, some of your overtime asks this year were from the assessor, obviously DMV um, services. Um, when we dug in and looked at specific departments driving big pieces of overtime, we were seeing that there was a small proportion of employees overall of the whole staff for that department that were driving those overtime costs. And in some areas, those overtime heavy people were working 110% to 166% of a standard 2080 annual working hours. So these people are putting in 25, 28 extra hours a week of overtime. It's a lot of overtime. So we're also seeing that, and I know as a manager, managers tend to work longer hours. We're seeing that a lot of the overtime was being driven by management or higher compensated employees. Those overtime hours were, were generated that way. And as well in 2017, lieutenants were converted to hourly. So we were seeing some growth in that area, but for the most part, it's um, higher end deputies and sergeants. Um, we're seeing a lot at the jail, but again, no surprise staffing, that kind of thing. But in looking at the numbers, when you see the totals, you could be hiring FTEs for what we're paying in overtime. Overtime is the most expensive way to pay for labor. So it just kind of brought home the fact and, and, and just underscored what we kind of already knew is we need to be able to recruit and retain talent so that we don't have all this overtime because it costs so much more for overtime. What is that uh, last item mm -hmm. uh, equal out in terms of uh, absolute number of FTEs versus two to four 
by department. It depended on the, on the department. In some departments, I mean, if you take all departments. All departments. Right. I don't have that number, but I can calculate it for you. I'd like to know also okay. are those FTEs loaded labor rates. Yep. I think part of the issue becomes though we're just having trouble hiring people right. right so you just can't get the bodies even if we approved more positions right there's just nobody to fill them the market's so tight all right i don't know there it goes So we thought we'd throw in some pictures. So for those of, of folks who are working a ton of hours, they're missing out. And work-life balance, we all know, is very important because if people don't get enough rest, then their, their work day isn't putting forth quality work. So what can we do? So in some areas, we have KCSO departments that actually are not using all of their overtime. Now, you've already cut some overtime, but rather than cut that overtime that we're projecting would be available. We could, with the board's okay, cut in one area and maybe place some overtime dollars in departments that have their FY2020 overtime cut. So we could use existing overtime dollars to fund some of these areas where overtime was needed, but got cut. So we could do that if, if you guys are okay with that. Uh, second is, again, a small proportion of employees are, are driving the overall cost. So do we want to make sure that one of the keeps that we have, the sheriff has 50000 of recruiting dollars in a new program. Um, recruiting dollars support hiring FTEs. So that's something to think about. If, if you support reducing overtime, supporting recruiting dollars kind of goes hand in hand with that. So that's something for the board to consider. So should we expand recruiting efforts? Is this something that we should do? Or are there other ways that over time can be mitigated? Um, something to take back to managers and, and see if there's, if there's ways around uh, you know, shifting workloads. In my department, we're shifting workloads. We're trying to downsize a little bit. We're trying, trying to use comp time rather than overtime, that kind of thing. So, and then, just put down at the bottom because we're in the process of the wage study and looking at salaries and that's been named as a priority for the board um, bringing salaries up to market will likely alleviate some of this as well so with the wage study and, and increasing salaries this will definitely contribute to the reduction of overtime so that's what we have okay. for that. Thank you. Yeah. Thoughts, Leslie, Bill? Any place we can cut is okay. good. I like encouraging um, comp time. Okay. All right. So our new and improved preliminary summary. Okay, so we're just over 5.2 mil shortfall? Yep. Okay. And if we look at the keep side, you got about 124,000 right now given the keepers that you have down on your keep panel in the center there. What I also did on the keep side is uh, our current number, this is unofficial, on the record, this is unofficial, still auditing the numbers and still working through stuff. The, the, uh, the wage study will be presented at ne next week's elected officials meeting. That's correct. But the estimated number I, that I plugged in was three million. So I put in half of that for this year because there was talk about splitting it between two years. So I went ahead and plugged in the 1.5 here as 50% of the estimated pay plan. That's why your, your keeper number has decreased. That's okay for now. Mm -hmm. yeah. So on this side, and I need to update this still, but I took this as a pay period 11. This is the 2% wage increases. This is the updated matrix moves loaded as of um, this week. We finalized those numbers with the sheriff's office, so this is what the matrix moves are. So that's duplicated on both sides here. So this is where we are. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm glad you brought up the priority for the increases. And what I wanted to say uh, is that given that's the case, 
and I guess I'm going to appeal to not only the department heads but the other EOs is to keep that in mind because as we go forward, we're going to be making some aggressive cuts in other areas. If we're going to take care of the employees, we're going to have to weather those other cuts. So let's get ready. I'm prepared to start. Okay. So, but then I guess I should yield. Leslie, do you want to make any recommendations for cuts as we go forward? I'm going to go after the cuts before the keeps, by the way. Okay. Okay, but do you want to, Bill, any thoughts? I think we have to take each one of them like we, we've talked about mm -hmm. kind of briefly and then make some hard decisions. And every one of these things can and will probably be revisited as we go through adjusting. Okay. Uh, so we may say, take this out. Well, that's out. And then we get down to the bottom line and we go, yeah, you know, we could put that back in. And, and that's exactly right. And, you know, we can make the cuts in these next few rounds and if it turns out that we've got the room and the necessity is there, we can put them back in. But mm -hmm. for example, and I'll start with one right here, the 2% wage increase, mm -hmm. given that we're going to be doing the wage distribution, analysis and distribution, can we, and that'll probably roll right in, can we take that out? Sure. So you, you're not in favor of doing the keep uh, scenario? No, not yet, because I think there are areas for obvious cuts. Mm -hmm. And then we can get into the keeps. <clears throat> okay, so do you want the 1.5 then on this side? Yeah, leave the 1.5 on that side. Okay. Take, take that out. Okay. Because that's essential. And the 1.5, 1, 1 as far as I'm concerned, right now is, is a placeholder. Okay, what it'll come in, we'll have a better idea Wednesday. And, and Sylvia, correct me if I'm wrong, but there are going to be several different scenarios. Is that correct? We have um, two scenarios, but playing them in different ways. Um, and Nancy's been instrumental in helping us do the analysis. So um, we'll have we have four four potential scenarios for you to look at. Okay. That and I'll keep going through this. If you guys agree or disagree, no, you, can, you can let me know. Okay. The other item. And I don't want Dan to flip out here because it's not what it appears to be. But uh, we have the migration through the matrix, and I think that amounts to some six hundred thousand dollars. Ninety-two. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Nancy. It's ninety-two. It's only ninety-two. Oh, okay. Leave it alone. Okay. Leave it. Okay. So we're okay with that. I got. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, we're okay for now. But again, for the, mo for the moment, pending what's going to occur on Wednesday. I think you'll have a better indication. Yeah. All right. What do we have in there for the coroner's lab? Okay, I'm bringing up the capital. This a little bit bigger. All right. Coroner has three items here. No, the we construction a, is fine. Yep. 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 That's yep. okay. Body coolers and lab. All right, take the lab out, please. Do I have agreement there? Yes. All right, take it out. I'm not trying to be dictatorial, folks, but there are some things that just can't happen this year. We need to start someplace. Mm -hmm. Okay. Body coolers, as well. Body coolers? Mm -hmm. Take them out? Yeah, because see, um, Doctor, you have four at the airport right now? Four body coolers? Is that right? Yes. Three. Sorry. Three. Three. Three at the airport. So, so we're good to cut this one? You okay? Yep. Take it out. Okay. One that's been inconspicuous for a while. Take me to the treasurer's budget. Are we looking at the B budget or? Yeah, we're, uh, look, it's 8110. Okay. No, it's not 8110, forgive me. It's uh, his 8293 bank services and investment fees. Okay, so so is this, this is a revenue. Right. Okay. <clears throat> it's not a revenue, it's an expense. 
expense. No, it's an expense, forgive me. Yeah, did I say revenue? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. I'm going to go <coughs> into our system and pull it up. He's here, so he can speak to it. Yeah. Um, yes, well, while she's doing that, it's probably an appropriate moment before we go further. I, I just need some clarification about the, the, the frozen positions that are indicated on being this printout from June 7th. Mm -hmm. And some of these positions that are indicated, well, let me take a step back. Most of them are ours. And uh, there's a couple of them, one in particular for OEM and another one uh, on the detective side that have already been filled that you froze them. <laughs> so I mean, I'm not sure how that's all supposed to work. But we, the crime analyst was hired on June 9th, which mm -hmm. is going to be frozen. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the OEM has got somebody that's just, I mean, they've gone through the whole process, they're about to get offered a job. I mean, how? How, how are we addressing those things? We we knew that there would be some of those that we okay. were we'll just able to catch. Yep. We just added one back for J Pro as well. Yep. Okay, good. Yep. So yep. Lo as long as that's clear, that's that's all we want to say. Yes, we, we'll we knew that there was going to be that miss. You know that we didn't know who was in process. Okay, and positions. just going down the road, you know, we we have eleven patrol deputies, eight control room operators, three control room I'm sorry, eight emergency communication operators three control room operators and one booking clerk, all in the background process. So we're, we're putting a lot of effort into this to get them hired. And so I hate to be putting all that effort into something that you're gonna say isn't available to fund once we put them through the pain of the background process. Okay, so, well, how much of this is known to Dina, though? <coughs> I, I don't know. I, I'm just, for the record, I just wanna make it clear. Probably that none of it. So well, he, he, and, and yeah, I mean, we're, we're just working with HR. We went ahead and took a stab and saw, okay, some of these were, you know, 400, 500, 700 days. So we just went ahead and did that. But if they're actively hiring, then we can add them back. Then, so, and yeah. and just, yeah, make sure Dean is aware. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We yeah. just at least work. Just, when, when, when people were coming on the about this, I said, I used Dina's term because I talked to Dean. It's kind of squishy. Yeah, it is squishy. I'm tired of getting squished right. here. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, account number? Uh, 8293. Okay. Okay. So when we get it, we budgeted for um, bank services and investment fees. And Steve, I'm glad you're here. You've got 45,000 budgeted for fiscal 20. Um, you've been averaging far less than that. Your five-year average is 8,800 bucks. Can we reduce that? No. Why? Because the $8,800 that you're referencing is not accurate. Okay, but if I look at 2016 and 17, there are 31,000 and 21 and a half thousand respectively. So you're averaging about 25 in those two years. Again, that's inaccurate. If you go back and you look at what I've been trying to do for the last several years, is quantify what the actual expenditures are. There's an earnings credit that we have that we maintain with the bank. So we have deposits at the bank. We get an earnings credit, which offsets the fees. Okay? Go ahead. Sometimes the auditor does not capture the total aggregate amount of the fees, and they just take the net. The actual gross amount is about 45000 so if we're doing our budget process correctly, it is $45,000 for all banking fees and everything else. Okay, so when I go back to 16 and 17 and I see an average of 25,000, you're telling me there's... It's more than that. It's more than that yes. is what you're saying. All right. <coughs> Questions? So is the credit listed in your revenue side? It should be. Okay. All right. Fair enough. All right. Okay. Uh, I've got a few more here. Um, I'm going to shift over to the clerk. And let me pull this up. Okay. Let me tell there are a few items here. So I'm glad you're here, Jim. Uh, 
Okay, let's look at... Hang with me. Okay, county assistance. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking at the right one here. Hang with me. Is it fund 40 or fund 10? Yeah. Yeah, it's fund 10. 10.2 yeah. okay. point, I'm sorry, count 8221, 10.2.246.3. Do you see it? Yeah, we're budgeting for uh, almost 449000 for this year. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. Okay, so the three-year average is running around 347000 and if actually took a closer look at 2017 through 19, we're potentially going to come in under 300000 Can we make an adjustment there? You're going to be funding, one of the proposals was to fund county assistance out of fund balance, as co former Commissioner Bingham suggested last year. Mm -hmm. What does that do for you? Yeah, so it's already coming out of fund balance. Well, that's fund um, for This is fund for now. This is fund and with respect to that, we, we really don't know. We've got a meeting, as I told you earlier, with Senator Souza right after this Good meeting point, right. to discuss how the Medicaid expansion and county assistance are all going to be affected. To answer is just a wag. And, and I think you're right, because I met with Mary this morning. Right. You know, so I'm glad she is meeting with you guys. So, I mean, it could be, it, that, that fund could be zero next year we don't know it depends if but if we took a hundred or hundred and twenty thousand out of it that's money available it goes back into fund balance available for some other application well it's at the general fund 10 it's not coming from the energy fund right. 40 so it's yeah. separate oh, right. yeah but but i mean i certainly recognize what the board is faced with and if that's something you want to go ahead and do i can't really make a an argument because i just don't know the yeah answers. we don't know and you're absolutely right jim <clears throat> um so but as i'm sorry go ahead do we want to cut that then to say 300. yeah take it down to th well take it down to three and a quarter okay and we can come back with the board after our meeting exactly because shelly just exactly. went to a clear right. county assistance meeting down. Right. Mm -hmm. okay I've and made you guys okay here. anybody okay with no, that that's fine all right just yeah, go ahead, a lot of the money that's being charged to those accounts are for the police holds. Mm -hmm. And if we can readdress taking those from seven days down to three days, we can really reduce the charges there. And, and thank you for bringing that up because I committed to Shelly that I would do that, yeah. that I would speak with Barry, so I need to do that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Got it. Awesome. That will save the county a lot of money. We have brought that forward in the past. Yeah, okay. I've got a couple more. Uh, they're not that major, but um, let me see. Take me to the doctors. And that would be account date. Well, it's 8115, still 10.2. Okay, yeah, I'm looking at mine. What are you looking at that one? Okay. You can find 10 or 40 there. Uh, it's Same 10, place. 10, yeah. Okay. So, okay, so our, and this is not a big deal, but our 2020 request is just over $36,000. Um, am I looking at the right one here? Where did I get $80,000? I'm looking at the wrong one. Yeah, there was one that was substantially higher. Uh, the mental health? The one that Dina's on right now? Yeah, it's mental health. Thank you. I want to get the wrong one down. I apologize. Okay, so we've got a request at 115000 We have a five-year average of just over seventy-one. 
Year to date, we're running at about close, just under 48,000. We're two thirds of the way through the year. If this trend continues, we're gonna wind up at about 70,000. Can we take the 115 down to 80? Well, and again, if we screw yeah. it up, we can always do right. yeah. yeah. I mean, I heard what you said earlier. I'm not gonna sit here and argue with you. Okay. You have a very tough job ahead of you. Thank you, Jim, so, I appreciate it. All right, it's noted. 80? Yep. Um, the other one is very small. It's uh, district court. Okay, so district court budgeted for 18 and 19. I'm sorry, it's 8103. Still fund 10. And this is a small amount, but nevertheless, we budgeted 2,500 bucks. We show no actuals going back five years. Do we need it? Which one is it? It's 10.2.221.3. Uh, yeah. Legal services. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they picked that up in 45. I mean, it's not a big deal, but. I will say I'm personally glad we haven't had to use any legal <laughs> services and you know if it's zero it's zero so what is this what legal is services for because we have two I know two district court cases coming up um, on the indigent side so it just this wouldn't have anything to do with that because we're gonna our team represents you well what that would be is legal services if we have to justify an action in a case that maybe something wasn't done a hundred percent according to one of the sides in the case they might bring litigation against the court itself oh, okay i mean since we haven't spent and fortunately that the answer is zero right. and that's what we hope it always is so you want to cut a thousand bucks take it down to 1500 or do you want to leave it it's so insignificant in the, lar yeah, in the larger scheme of things, I don't see yeah, that. I, I don't see a, a point right now, I mean. And we're opening to readjust, you know. Okay, leave it there. Okay. Um, I've got one, actually a couple more and I'm done. Okay. Not yeah. to spare BOCC, I don't have it in front of me, but I just spoke with David Callahan, community development, okay. and they're flat out to begin with, but that's beside the point. He's good. I'll let you get there first. He's got consulting of seventy thousand dollars, and I'm not sure. We'll find it. It? Thank you. I spoke with David about that. They were anticipating a good deal of, I don't want to say advertising, but promotion because of the omnibus effort and the, the, the comp plan review. I spoke with him before the meeting. He's okay to take it down to 35. Okay. So let's take 35 by there. Yeah. All right. Noted. And I have one final item. Every year, because of unanticipated revenue or the late payments that come in from taxes that are overdue, and there's another fund and it escapes me for the moment, but we will pick up 1.3 to 1.5 million dollars. Okay. Okay. Historically, that's pretty much what we've been averaging. Now, I don't have those funds in front of me. I can get them if you'd like. Okay, because I need more specificity. So you need, okay, yeah. so what you probably want to do is look into that. Okay. Um, and I'll get you those, I'll get you that. this. The if line. I have the work set, then I can trace it back okay. to the I can, I can do that. Okay. So let's just put that aside for the moment. Nancy, do you know which funds they are? No, here? I have no idea. Okay. You're saying we're under revenue? 
Yeah. Yeah, because every year we pick up somewhere, be and it's been actually as high as 1.8 or 1.9. Are you talking about the unanticipated revenue? Well, and it, some of that is grant money, so we can't really budget that? Yeah, no, I don't think this is grant money. Okay. Some of it is taxes that come in late, Steve would know. And there's another category, it escapes me at the moment, but okay. I'll find out for okay. you. Okay. Absolutely. Okay, great. But there's a, so where does, where, can you do a real-time run as to what we just took out? Well, we can go back to the preliminary summary. <clears throat> When you're doing that, let me go grab something real quick. Okay, so I didn't write down the Mental number. health, you were going to reduce by 80. Okay. Because I wrote down what the number should be rather than what the, <laughs> what the cuts or were. Or reduced to 80. Yeah, reduced to 80. Yeah. So do we know what that was? It would be 35. What's that? 15. It was 115, so it would be 35. Okay. And then you're reducing the police holds, but I don't know if there's a cost attached to that or how much that is. It's to 300,000, but I don't know what was the mission. 448. 448, so 148. Okay. And then on county assistance, you were doing the Medicare expansion, reducing that amount. I don't remember what. To. Twenty five, eighty one fifteen, eighty one eighteen, reduced to eighty thousand. Yeah, which you had the thirty five, right? That's somewhere you have that in there. Okay, I think those are the two. Reduced to thirty five for community development from what, seventy? Yes, seventy five. So that's thirty. Seventy five. Pretty sure it's thirty. Not 35. No, no, no. 40. 40. Yeah, I thought it was 75 to 35. Yeah. Okay. And then the consulting. Yeah. You got that one. I got that. Okay. Dina, I yep. think there's a second 35. Okay. David Callahan's 35 and County Assistant's 35. So it went down to 35? You cut, you cut it to 35, so it would be yeah. 40. 40. So 40, not 30? Right. For okay. the cut. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Is there another one? Okay. So there you are. 3.4? This is an uh, possible cut, an optimistic cut. This takes it down to 3.1. If 
we were able to get the travel savings. But that 3.1 does not include the 1.5 placeholder for employee raisers. Right. Yeah. But did we, Chris said he didn't want it in there. Here, working on two sides. Right. So you probably I don't know. I mean, I, I just like the you cheap side. Back in. So <coughs> I would think you'd have to put 1.5 in yeah. there. Well, no, that's okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's okay. So where, so where are we oh, with the wage increases? Yes, you plugged in the 1.5 million in there. Oh, so we didn't have that in previously, yeah. right? No, so the other side was down to zero. <coughs> I'm sorry? That there was zero. Oh, okay. We took the, the actual 2% out, but then we added the one. And then we added that in. Okay, so our shortfall is, is that correct? So our new, if our shortfall. Yes. With all the cuts that were identified. Yes. Is that if we are able to glean another 250 for the travel savings that we were talking about, you're at 4.6. If people want to see this, there are plenty of copies here. Um, did I give you one? No. Ron is not. Just you might want to pass those around if people are interested. So the this is the roughly one and a half million that I referred to before leaving the room. Okay. Um, some of this is unanticipated revenue. So just fund ten and fifteen. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So we'd have to dig into this. And yeah, you'd have to dig into where this. Is right. coming from. Um, as far as state uh, income, I'm not sure how much of this gets budgeted or how much of this we just basically, you know, we, we plug in a number, but yeah, we don't want to overstate it. Right, yeah. and we plug so it we in from fund know. balance and then, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so I can dig, we can dig into this. Super, thank yeah. you. Okay. Appreciate it. All right. So. Onward. Do you want to look at capital since those are our biggest wins? Sure. Okay. Are you okay, Leslie? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Yeah, does anybody need a break or anything? Uh, we're, we're okay. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that Jen and Jim can get out in time too, but we can break for five. Do you want to? Let's go a couple, 10 more minutes and then we'll break for five. How's that? Okay. All right. Lead us, Dina. Yes. So what you're looking at right now on the screen is your capital asks. So as of today, we're probably not going to talk about vehicles because we're waiting to hear back from fleet management, but there are other items on here. Mm -hmm. um, these particular ones that are highlighted here um, have a signed fund balance uh, put with them. Those are listed up here in the far right of your CapEx page. So they're already funded in your preliminary summary. The ones that have the green are already taken care of with restricted fund balance. Mm -hmm. uh, we reduced the building down to five million. Yep. So I just went ahead and split it 500 and 4,500 okay. for that. Mm -hmm. So lots of other stuff. So community development, office redesign was cut. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got some IT things. We've got a track it. We've got a copier. 
this Bongar support solution, DeepNet, Spillman module, mobile arrest form, detective conference room, multimedia wall, um, access security system for Compton building. So are there any IT sheriff items here that you would consider cutting? I, w I want to know more about the track. I, is, that well, a, here's, is that a assessor? No, it, here's where I'm at. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I just was saying that yeah. um, track is used by community development. And no, I don't understand what. Go ahead. It says, it says 47,500. For the track it. Right? Am I right or am I on the wrong line? Yep. Yeah. No, you're right. Okay. Yeah, I said I'd like to know more about that. As far as what they have to and why we got to spend 47500 Well, it looks like an update. Um, it's in IT's budget. And I think track it is used for the properties for assessor and uh, a lot of the software for the departments is managed by IT. So I believe track it as part of the assessor's um, software. So this looks like an update. Because an upgrade. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, an upgrade can be different, quite different from an update. Okay. They say you have to update something to have it work. Yeah, this is uh, the current version is not end of life yet. It's still, it's in support only mode, meaning there's no longer enhancements or upgrades, just bug fixes. Mm -hmm. That's my Yeah. Okay. That, I, I, I'm going to suggest a different approach here. On Wednesday, we're going to get some figures on the wage adjustment. Me personally, I'm uncomfortable going through the individual line items because truthfully it gets arbitrary. Uh, and in some cases, the individual involved, the department has not here to defend it. My approach and, and is once we go into Wednesday and we have the scenarios from HR, from Sylvia, and we have some idea what will, and I don't know if it's the one five, maybe it's one two, maybe it's two, I, I don't know, is to turn around and basically I'm going to challenge the EOs and the department heads and I'm going to say, if you agree that we're going to take care of the employees, cut. You figure it out. But don't come to me mid-year and say, you got to pay for this because I'm not going to do it. Okay? There's got to be consensus. But if I'm going to go through individ every individual line item, I mean, I've got to do it with, with the relevant Everybody. individual here. If that person is here, we're trying to make assessments that I don't think we're qualified to make. Well, we, will we have those numbers? Of from HR. You'll have numbers from HR. Prior to Wednesday? Mm. Or did they That's go when they're well? being released. Yeah. Wednesday will be probably more of the full picture in terms of that. Um, so you really can't plug that in to use that in, in any meaningful way, can you? Well, you, I'm the sorry, go ahead, Sylvia. The 1.5 million, you can plug it in. Okay. That would be close to half. Okay. Would, in one scenario, it, it is half. half. Yeah. It just depends what scenario you all agree to, to go with it. You see what I'm saying? And the numbers come with a lot of explanation, so it's tough to give them out ahead of time without the explanation yeah. that goes with it. Yeah. The other thing, and I don't want to switch gears, but for me, for now, I'd like to go after the bigger items. Like, for example, if we switch gears to B budget, we identified, and I think it's up on the board, there's some half a million dollars of the B new budget. I'm no, sorry? The upbeat increases is 335,677. Wasn't it 513 previously? Nope, that's been cut because the travel was cut back. Oh, there some okay. other things okay. cut. We've already cut quite a bit in the B area. Anything more available in that 376? Well, we're going to look at the travel. Okay. And there are new programs. Yeah, the new programs which we have. The new programs right now. Um, we have about, well, we have 627,917. We reduced that somewhat because we've uh, taken out the soft code and just put in the 50,000 for the um, infrastructure. Okay. But there, are, there are other items on the new programs. So let me bring up new programs. We can, those are pretty manageable. Yeah, it's a fairly small list.
So you have, um, here's the recruitment. This onboarding is associated with an employee. Um, here's the audit services. I think this is also part of uh, yeah, we took person ask. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So soft code's been reduced. This is all part of the collections function for district court. We're hoping that that would be offset by revenues received. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's this mobile assessor module. So there's a few in here that are probably cuttable. The mobile assessor, Mike claims, some of these are somewhat familiar to me. He claims that that's going to save labor. Rich. Not rich. Not rich. Not rich. Not rich. <laughs> we'll just rename He was here a long time. It's okay. <clears throat> I was going to call him Leroy. Right. Um, <laughs> so are you, are you all right taking out the an internal audit? I mean, sure. Well, we'll put it on the record again that we are a large organization without an internal audit function. Yeah. And we've seen headlines. How many do we need to see? So right. I understand, tough job, but I'm on the record. We don't have an internal audit function. Thank I'm going to echo Jim's comments as well. You feel that it's necessary? I think we're getting awfully damn close, yes. But maybe this isn't the year. You know, we understand. I mean, the right. auditor definitely understands that with limited resources, there's probably one big goal you can get to this year with available funds just because you're so short. Leslie, no. I agree with that. I mean, I think that's a very good thing to have. Very good. But is this the year we have to do it? Well, in fairness to what Jim just said, we do this every year. Is this the year? Is this the year? And we keep passing on it. But Leslie? Well, talking about the vote machines for a second, I know we're going back to capital, but is this a, a fair trade off if we can't do the vote machines this year and we can do the internal audit function? I mean, Jim? Elections are mandated. Auditor internal audit is not. Okay. You're also talking about two different. Oh, I get it. That's right. 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 Yeah. But I'm just, just saying question. one may cause us more jeopardy than the other. No, what I'm saying is that the voting machines, I think, is a one time expense. Right. Correct. Yeah. And the internal audit theoretically would be an ongoing. Right. It's a new program. program. That's what I was trying to do. What's the, what's the dollar amount for the machines again? There's two. We have the DS850. Uh, 253 and uh, and then the one. express votes we requested 70 of those yeah so 253 and then the um, we're up on the screen marks okay. which is the new machine are they both new um, are you talking about the express vote replacing yeah, the automarks, yeah, yeah. the 70 machines? That yeah. So those, that would be new to, we already have two 850s, DS 850s, those are tabulators. Judd seemed to, uh, the ESS express machines, uh, how many are there in that two uh, of Question 70. 70. 70. One for each person. Yeah. I think we can cut some. We'd certainly want to deploy them, I would think, in the heavier precincts. It's 35. And they can be utilized that? again for early voting. Yeah. And that, that is a nice feature. Yeah. Alex. So I can't remember what Judd's answer was, but I asked him, you know, is how many? 10? Yeah, so exactly. I think, I think we said we'd start with 10. 10. I will say that the uh, DS 850 being, we're heading into the big election uh, season. Leave it alone. If one machine goes down, I mean, we had in November, I think I'm the okay. results at 5 a.m. at 18, so. I'm okay with that. Okay, so we're taking the 70 down to 10. Yep. For now, uh, we'll leave in the audit motion. No, I cut it. Oh, you, no. oh, you cut it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. And it's yeah. also 100,000 ongoing. Yeah. It's every year. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. And we, 
There's we very may have to add back in yeah. to the B budget mm -hmm. the transporting of the automarks because they are so heavy, right. no one can, we have people who can't even lift them. So we pay to have them transported. So we'll probably have to add some back for 60 precincts to have automarks. So we'll look at the outlying precincts as opposed to the bigger precincts. Right, right. So Dina, can you, can you get us those numbers as far as uh, the B budget items um, offsetting the 10 versus 70 sure. uh, units? Mm -hmm. You want to take a quick five minute break? It's 202. Be back at 207. Does that work? And then Jim and Jen will make sure we get you out of here. Okay. Right. <laughs> what time is your meeting? Three. Three. She's gone on Mondays. Hmm.
1209, we are resuming our uh, special meeting for fiscal 20 budget deliberations. Dina, would you catch this up, please? Okay, so from what I'm hearing from the commissioners now is really there's not going to be a real strong direction on anything really until we hear about the wage study next Wednesday. So what I'm going to suggest is that the auditor go back, scrub through uh, what we've talked about, make those adjustments, uh, maybe bring forward some ideas, and then just wait, wait and reconvene after the wage study's been presented, and then we can really dive in because honestly, and again, I skip to the punchline, you can only keep a couple things. And we can agonize and go through and what are we going to cut, exactly. what are we going to cut. But exactly. in reality, I mean, really, truthfully, in reality, we have to cut everything and maybe add back a couple of yeah. things yeah. if we're going to do the wage study. So to me, and again, this is just my opinion, I think it's a lot less painful for everyone if we just say, look, if the wage study is our priority, and you were saying it too, Chris, then we have to be willing to forego everything else for the employees so that we can stay under budget and not go into foregone. Precisely. So um, do, you, do you support the idea of us updating what we have and then coming back with new numbers and updates after the wage study? Leslie? Yes. Bill? I do. Otherwise, I think it's an exercise in chasing our tail. And Jim, please. And one other thing, uh, Chris, we will dig deeper into yes, thank you. funds 10 and 15 as you had requested. Sure. Right, and, we'll and we'll look at all the OPEX as well right. and see if we can't glean some savings because Super. even though the new asks for the B budget are about 350000 the B budget is a big part of our budget. So if we see trends or areas where we can cut, like kind of where you were going earlier on, Chris, we'll be looking at those things too. Okay, and maybe cool. we can come back with a, a manageable list of things, but really, honestly, as a finance director, you're gonna, it's it's gonna be really painful death by a thousand cuts if we, if we say, okay, we know that this is our priority, what other couple things do we really have to pay for, and then we're just gonna have to say, sorry, we have to look at this next year. And I think you're right. So, think thank you. Right. you. Yes. You bet. All right. Now, are we scheduled for deliberations on Monday? We are. So it looks like we have Alliant from 10 to 12. Oh, they are in July. Oh, in July. July. In July. So our next our next meeting is on the 17th. That's Monday, and uh -huh. then the one after that is on Friday the 21st. Yeah, so maybe between the 21st and that meeting about the wage study, maybe we can squeeze a short meeting in just to give you an update because you're sure. going to have BOE and, and waiting until the 21st, I think we're going to lose a lot of ground. I think you're right. So is Monday still on, Dina? Are we going to leave Monday? Well, Afternoon is. Yes, Afternoon Monday. is Afternoon still on. Is. But if you want us, if do you want us to do the afternoon meeting, we could do a short one and give you Why an not? update. Okay, just, if well, nothing more than the update, that. absolutely. Okay. okay, we'll we'll see how much we can get updated, and then I guess the twenty first is next week. So then Friday on the twenty first, we can go through the wage study, go. and then see where we're at. And then again, if if you decide, okay, this is our priority, and these are the few things that we're going to keep, we're cutting everything else. I mean, conceivably, and I'm I'm just throwing this out here. We could finish on the 21st. You could say, okay, cut, you know, we're doing this, we're keeping this, we're paying for it this way, and boom, we're done. You go into BOE, we clean everything up, we come come out with Alliant in July, we kind of clean everything up there, and we're done. And you can have your summer. I think what you're painting is very reasonable and doable. Okay. I really do. All right. Leslie, okay. Absolutely. Anything further? Bill? I think it's reasonable and extremely optimistic, and I hope you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I have no other choice than to the donut, not the whole. That's <laughs> yeah. right. Okay. All right. So, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And by the way, public comment. Bob. Come on, Bob. Oh. Glad to be here. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> We're glad you're here. Anyway. Nice okay. uh, so anyway, once again, Bob, thanks for coming. John's gone.
Jim, Jen, Dina, thank you very much. Yeah. Michelle. Yeah. I'm forgetting yeah. Michelle. I apologize. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and our staff, Nancy, and everybody else for your cooperation and contribution. We truly thank you. Time is 2.14, meeting adjourned. Great. Have a great week. Excellent.